All right, we're gonna to have to use my phone instead. For whatever reason, my iPad has decided not to respond. Um, it's just gonna be slightly smaller, but it'll work just as well. Um, and the first one I want to um, show will be Polyscan, the Polycam, sorry. It's called Polycam. Um, and this is the, I'm gonna to have to talk a little bit loudly because I move a little bit over across the room here to uh, another portion. Can you still hear me? Okay, um, so here we have a, uh, a scanner that is using uh, both the images, the photo images, and a little LiDAR laser that a modern um, kind of high-end phone or iPad would have. But this app is useful both with, you know, if you have a scanner or not. And I just have this little object here as a little autonomous race car, RC car that we're working on. Um, and I am going to scan it by just pressing this uh, record button here in the middle. And you can see you can toggle between running it through photographs and through LiDAR. So a photograph version, this is the process of doing photogrammetry, just um, like the previous presentation suggested. With LiDAR, it's going to combine the photo imagery with just a little laser sensor that's going to be more accurate to determine the distance of each of those images than you would get normally. And it'll, it'll feel a bit more like a scan. So I'm just going to walk around this object here, kind of get it from top to bottom. I'm going a little bit quickly, so it's not going to be amazing as a result, but we will get the idea. And I'm back around, so I'm going to stop that. Okay, so that's going to, um, you can see here, it has located kind of the location of that camera according to that spot in all possible directions. And it's also noticed that there's a number of things in the background that I saw kind of behind it. And it's also made a little bit of scan of this room. I, of course, was only trying to scan that object, not to scan the room. So I didn't get any of the floor and so forth. But I could decide that it should organize, organize itself on the space or the object. I'm going to go to the object because that's what I was after. And it's probably going to take about a minute or so to process. So while that runs, um, I will mostly just vamp here because I want to show you the results of what that uh, is going to look like. Uh, so you can see it's processing here. This um, particular app, I believe, is sending, um, actually, I can't remember if this app is doing its processing locally or if it's doing it on the, uh, in the cloud. So here's the result of that. You can tell from this side, it turned out reasonably well. It's got pretty good detail. I clearly went a little bit faster back over here. You can kind of see it, it doesn't have great, it's kind of melted in appearance over here. But this is what a really quick kind of LiDAR scan would look like with non-optimized lighting and I could have been a lot longer. But I want to show a way of visualizing this here. So I now put this in augmented reality um, in that location. And you can see it's sitting next to the original here. Um, and you can definitely tell it's not the same, but it is relatively useful in terms of being able to um, either take measurements or annotate or bring in more interestingly, bring into kind of a, a virtual environment. Um, so that's Polycam. It's, it's pretty quick. It's to get from, it was about three minutes to kind of get to a model that you could then share over at Sketchfab. You could put in an augmented reality environment. Multiple people could be in that same um, space and look at it, or they could be in different spaces and kind of interact with that um, as well. I think it's probably the fastest way if you were interested in experimenting with, is this the kind of thing that would be useful in the type of storytelling or the type of class research or the type of projects that we'd want to do? And I have students in many of my classes use apps similar to this one um, that they're able to, um, to work on. Now, this, this quality one to do the LiDAR scanning does, does need to have a phone that's capable of that, but this app does have the photogrammetry option as well. But there's a brand new app that came out like three days ago. Um, by Epic Games, which is the owner of Fortnite. 
So they got a ton of money. Um, and they've been doing a lot of purchasing of companies in this 3D space. So things like Quixel and Megascans and Reality Capture, which is another photogrammetry modeling. Um, and it's that Reality Capture that released an app just in the last couple of days, but it's a test flight beta only. Um, I did manage to grab a spot on there, but I checked it this morning and it is no longer open. So I put the link in there anyway. I would follow that if you're interested in doing this because it is dramatically slicker than most of the other options and at least in beta, it's free. I'm going to just run, run the first half of this. It then takes the photographs from my phone, sends it to their servers and they load it directly to Sketchfab. I'm not gonna run through that whole process, um, but I, it does one feature that I think clarifies really nicely what um, is necessary for photogrammetry, whether you do it on your phone or whether you do it in a, um, with a, with a dedicated camera rig. So here is the same thing I'm gonna do. Um, in this case, I'm just gonna hold down the button and it is automatically taking photographs as they go along. You kind of see that number five, six, so forth going on. It wants me to do 20, so I'm just gonna keep kind of walking around and it's starting to kind of locate where some of these are. So same process. But what I really like about this app yeah, there we go, we're done, Let's stop it, is that it puts those photographs that up into kind of 3D space. So you can kind of walk around here and see where it identified each of those photos are, and actually they'll be color coordinated if like, some of them didn't, didn't more than apply, um, didn't mark. But this is a really nice visualization for what it is that photogrammetry is trying to do kind of in real time, is locate in space where each of these photos were taken, respect to one another, so we can then um, use uh, triangulation to figure out how far away this particular pixel in the blue corner here would be from uh, where these photos are as you recreate this 3D model. So this is a really nice version, and then you would then just take that, that's applied, and you export it straight up to Fab, and it's going to take about, I don't know, three or four minutes before it gets up there. If I'm still talking by then, I'm happy to go check it out. Um, and you can check the difference between a photogrammetry model done quickly and a LiDAR scan model done quickly. Um, as kind of a bonus, there's one other app I did want to highlight before I jump into VR, and it's called Record 3D. It's also in your um, in that link I sent around. And this does not do um, still object photogrammetry, but it does volumetric video, which is kind of the video version of photogrammetry. Um, and it is, it's pretty neat. So I'm gonna switch the camera stuff facing me and it is using the front, the true depth camera like you would do to unlock your, your face essentially in, in a phone to determine how far away those objects are. I'm just gonna do a, a quick recording here of myself talking to you all. So I am looking around, I can kind of turn myself, I'm also gonna move the phone to kind of various sides of what I am doing and it's recording as a video and I'll just go ahead and stop that. All right, now if I head over here to the library, All right, I'll just go ahead and pause that there. What's um, kind of unique about this form of uh, visualization is it, when it's just head on, it looks kind of like a crappy video. Um, but what you, when you realize that this thing is entirely in 3D, you can watch it from whichever side that you want. I can go ahead and remove that background entirely. So now I just kind of have isolated my head here. Um, and this could be brought again into VR. Um, we could in, in the spatial as an object, we kind of have a recording of someone um, volumetrically captured um, in the same way that we find there's this, this interest to having um, um, object scanned people as well. This is a single camera. So it's, all, it's always going to have this kind of weird 180 version um, in front of it, but with multiple camera setups, and this is actually something that I just put in for um, purchase here at the Wondery with a multi-camera setup where you'd be able to have that full capture uh, on the full side to kind of give that, that kind of more embodied avatar approach. So this is essentially video version of um, photogrammetry. How am I doing on time, Kazembeid? Uh, about two, three more minutes. Okay, um, I think I will in that case, just hop real quickly into a VR environment, though I don't have any of those scans that I just made, but those could all be imported into it. Um, and here, instead of, um, and I'm gonna, I am gonna run this live. 
but I'm not gonna share my screen. I'm actually gonna switch cameras and I put a camera inside the scene, um, a virtual camera that is, that is gonna output. So I'm gonna um, jump in there and meet you in there in a second. Okay, so you know I'm going to go ahead and skip this. <laughs> um, the VR set reset, and it's going to take me more than a couple of minutes to set it up again. Now, during Connor's presentation, I'll go ahead and get that reset up, and if there's time, I'll return to this. Um, it's another environment like Spatial, uh, except that it's set up to be uh, more of a recording studio that is meant to communicate both synchronously and asynchronously information as opposed to more of a meeting room um, or kind of a, of a live lecture hall, which is some of the differences with Spatial, although both could probably be used in similar ways. So I'm just going to go ahead and end there and set this up and I'll return if time.